All right, so greetings, everyone. This session is end of the year cleanup for your Google Classrooms. A couple of tips and tricks just to get you ready for next school year so you don't have to think about it. You can do this tonight. You could do it in August. There's no rush. Just giving you the tips right now. I'm Ron Carroll, and with me, as always, is the inimitable Joy Blake, your instructional technology team. Happy to help you however we can. So there are pretty simple steps. We're going to go through them all one by one, but you know, basically the simple steps are make sure that you've graded everything and returned all of your students' work, remove your students from the classrooms, archive your classrooms, remove your extraneous Google Classroom calendars from your calendar, and then if you're interested in some optional stuff, if you used any rubrics, you can download those and uh, have them in a Google Sheet to reuse next year. You can also clean up the Google Drive uh, Classroom folder a little bit, but, and I'll say this multiple times, do not delete that folder. That's one that Google does need. Um, and then we can also talk about creating a template for next year. You know, ITS will once again be creating uh, Google Classrooms for everybody, but that doesn't mean you can't uh, get a little head start over the summer, build out your classroom, and use the reuse post function, which if you had a chance to go to the Anywhere School just a mere hour ago, uh, an amazing, wonderful feature that I've been wanting for a very long time, the ability to schedule posts across multiple classrooms, which is very exciting and will make that template classroom even more powerful. All right, so let's get into it. Um, really, the, the first thing is to make sure that you return your student work. And I'm gonna flip back and forth between the presentation and a live demo here. And let's see. The quickest way to get there is to hit the To Review button there in your Google Classroom main page. So again, there on that main page, made it real easy with the to-do list, the To Review, and your calendar. To Review will show you all of your classes and all of the things that still need to be graded. Um, you can also drill into a specific course as needed. I can actually zoom into this a little bit here. And so you go in and you look for the things that are turned in but not graded. And this is actually not one of my classrooms, so I'm not going to actually grade all of these. But if you uh, you know go in and put in the grades for the classes for any students that you haven't finished the work, and then you'll want to make sure that you click them all and hit that return button. The return button and the reason, uh, yes, the reason that this is an important step is because the beauty of Google Classroom is, is that it manages all of the sharing and back and forth. And when you go into grade mode, you become the owner of the, or the editor. The students lose access and can only view it. When you hit the return button, it sends it back to the students um, so that they're now the editor. You'll have the view copy in your class in your classroom folder, which I'll show you in a bit. But hitting this return means it's no longer your problem. It's not your uh, you're not the editor, the owner of that document. The student is. So it's a nice thing to do just to return those and just make your life easy. And you know you can bulk do that with hitting that return button and selecting all students which is quite nice. The next step. Now this one, a lot of people go back and forth on this one on whether or not you should remove the students. I'm gonna say that it is entirely up to you if you would like to uh, contact your students over the summer. I, I, there's a few uh, special ed teachers that were asking me about that. Yes, you can keep your students in there. These stay live. Remotely, there's not a way for us to archive these, so this is on you. So these will be an option. I personally like to just remove all of the students, but again, it is entirely up to you, and I'll show you that feature here real quick as well. Super simple step. I'm going to go over to the People tab, 
And once again, just select all the students here. And then on actions, remove. So with three clicks, you can send the students on their way. This removes them from the Google Classroom, cleans up their uh, main page so that next year they're all clean and good to go. Because we know when you look at someone like me who does a lot of professional development and <laughs> has a lot of Google Classrooms, you don't want your students to start the school year looking like this. It's just too much, right? So if you go in and go to the People tab, click the button to select all students, and then just hit the Remove button, and that removes them from the classroom. So that cleans up theirs, but we also want to make sure that we remove, hold on, this is in the wrong order. We also want to archive our classrooms to make it easier so that we don't also have that massive list. So the caution here is don't archive or delete a classroom that you are not the primary teacher on. You'll want to have the primary teacher remove you. Um, it can cause some weird issues if they are not the one that does the archiving. So make sure that if you're a co-teacher in a classroom, you talk to your primary teacher and have them do the archiving. So a couple of caution signs there. The reason that we suggest that for at least this year, um, you archive and you don't delete. Now, if you've got a classroom from two years ago, three years ago, and you don't need anything out of it ever again, go ahead and delete them. I'll show you how to do that. But you really want to make sure that for the recent year, you just archive it because you never know. There's an assignment that you might want to do again. You can reuse posts from your archived classrooms. So anything that you've built and you're really happy and proud of, just archive it, and then you can grab that for uh, for next year. So archiving cleans things up. Let's pop over and see. Oh, <laughs> I just realized I made the classic mistake of not switching my tab. So this was the caution sign <laughs> that I was talking about. And then this next slide about archive, don't delete. There we go. Now let's share this tab again and talk about how to archive classroom. So we're going to go back to our main page with all of our classrooms, click on the skinny snowman, and hit archive. And it does give you some warnings here. Um, again, you know what you're doing. You want to make sure to archive. But here are those things that archiving a class archives it for all participants. And they can't be modified. Students uh, can't really do anything in them. So again, that's that if you want to remove the students, I think it it's a nice thing to do. All of the files stay in Google Drive. So let's Ron, go ahead and hit archive. Ron, yes, Gail. Can you do that one more time where you have so I've removed the students and now I want to archive the class. So do that one more time. Absolutely. Do you want me to do the uh, remove students or do you have that? No, I did. The, I know the okay. remove students. So then archive after I've removed them. So with to archive, you go back to the main home page. You can get from the hamburger menu and the, the classes up there gets you to the home page. And then you'll click on the three dots menu and archive. Now, once a class is archived, and that is the first step to deleting. So for if if you do decide to delete, you'll want to uh, click on the hamburger menu there at the top again and slide all the way down, which hopefully for most people, it is not as ridiculously long as that list I have. And your archived classes live here. And now we've popped over to our archived classrooms. From here, I have a few options. I can delete, which again, I'm cautioning you against. And if you've got assignments that you might want to reuse, you could also restore it. And this brings it back for everybody that's in there. Or again, delete. So those are, those are really the two options. You could make a copy of it. So this is where you would delete for those things that are older that you really don't need anymore. Like, for example, I don't need this test class. I'm just going to hit delete. 
And this will remove access, deletes all of the posts, all of the comments, anything that was in there. You cannot undo this action. If you delete a classroom, it is gone forever. So again, that's why I recommend archiving until you know for a fact that you are not going to need that class again. And then hit delete. Yes, friends, I see some raised hands. Ron, it was me. Oh. <laughs> um, I was just, uh, just to clarify with the deleting of the class, when someone deletes their class, all the work that they've assigned within that class is also deleted, correct? Or will they be able to access that in their Google Drive? The, the files that your students have shared with you will still be in the Google Drive, but all of your assignments, any of the instructions, all of the emojis and things that you put in there for your topics, all of that uh, vaporizes. So you will still be able to access any documents, but you would have to recreate those um, in the future. And Monica is asking, is there a way to return work without notifying the student? Is there a way to reset the assignment? So for, rem let me go back to, actually, I'm going to restore this one because I actually do use this class. Yeah, on that, I was asking, all the official grades were in Aspen. Mm -hmm. So I told students to look at Aspen oh, to absolutely. get the official grade. Yep. And if I'm, I'm afraid that if I start returning work now, somebody will, you know, do it or update it and return it back. Is well, it that's why you can remove them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, my, my advice would be to go in and, uh, you know, do the return, return the work, and then unenroll the student. So that okay. way that they're, they can't go back in and change anything, but they're also, uh, ownership is returned to them so that they don't, uh, so that they could reference those. in. The okay, future. all right, thank you. And yes, it is better to archive so you can keep the directions. I just showed you how to restore. If you do want to restore, um, your classroom that you've archived, that is easily done as well. And from that same place, you can delete. But again, only delete classrooms that you will never need again. Okay, so at this point, we've kind of covered the, the very basics of getting your classroom cleaned up. So you've returned work, you've unenrolled your students, and you've archived your classrooms. But there's another place that Google Classrooms put information, which is our calendars. So all of these, like that Apple Teacher Classroom, that was one that I was thinking about archiving. And this stays inside my calendar until I say, go away. And there are two options here. You can hover over the calendar itself, click on the three dot skinny snowman, and just hide it from the list. And that will put it away, and you won't have to think about it or see it. If you really want to just be done with it, you can click on Settings and Sharing. And then all the way at the bottom of the Settings page, is the ability to delete the calendar. And again, this is a permanent option that deletes it for anyone. So anyone that was left in that classroom, a co-teacher, even when you archive it, this calendar stays. So if you're done and want to delete it, go ahead and delete. Um, or you can just pop back here. Or you can just hide it and it's essentially the same thing, but anyone that had access would still have access. You've just hidden it from your own view. Again, there's always multiple options in, uh, in the Google world. Whatever workflow works for you is the one to go with. Typically, I just hide them personally in case there's ever a need that I need it again, but I also do a lot of PD. If I was teaching more regularly, I would probably, at the end of the year, just delete this calendar and not have to think about it. 
So again, settings is uh, in the calendar is how you delete them. The choice is yours. All the way at the bottom, there's that delete button. All right. Ryan, just to confirm, we have a, yes. a great question um, from uh, Shauna about high school seniors, and they mm -hmm. no longer have the CPS email. I just want to confirm that that information is right that I gave to her. Uh, Here we go to see this. Uh, she asks, um, she has high school seniors who had a school email that was deactivated. Their school email was how they access the Google Classroom. Can they ever get back in or do I need to come up with another option for them to receive info? So students who graduate from Chicago Public Schools, their accounts stay active for one year. So they are, for one calendar year post-graduation, able to uh, reaccess their Google Drives and, and such. And so their classrooms, they would be able to access as well. But it does have to be a CPS account to access a, a Google Classroom. And again, if you are going to be communicating with your students over the summer, don't do the removing option and all of those other things, because uh, then they won't have access. And the other thing, actually, while we're on that topic, those of us who have uh, our co-teachers, we can, let me find one that has a co-teacher. Uh, well, here, I'll do it from, this is one where I am in as a student, not as a teacher, and as a student, I have no option, no way to get out of this classroom anymore because Google took that uh, away from the student role in Google Classroom. So if you are in a, a PD classroom that you would like to remove yourself from, I, had, I did this for several people earlier today, uh, just reach out to the primary teacher and say, can you please remove me? I don't want to have this in my uh, classroom anymore. And most of them will happily do that for you. Just a side tangent caveat there. Uh, any questions before we move on? Yes, Joy. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, um, also, can we show them how to change their settings so that just in case they don't receive constant emails over the summer, if um, or anything, like if their Google Classroom is still active for some reason, how they could change those settings so that they don't receive just random emails they don't need or to change their notifications. Absolutely. So once again, in the kind of all powerful, uh, well, this one's the hamburger menu, the three lines, if you scroll all the way down to the settings here. so. One of the kind of uh, confusing things about Classroom is there are two settings panels. The one that you want for notifications is down here um, under all of the main ones. And here is where you can control your notifications. So classes you're enrolled in, classes that you teach, or you can turn off entire classrooms as well. So this down hit this part the class notifications at the bottom. This turns off all notifications for a classroom. But then you can also customize and choose what, for all of your classrooms, what you would like to receive. And if you want, the summer, I, you can just hit that and turn off notifications for all of them and just forget about it for a while and enjoy, <laughs> enjoy your summers. And then when you're ready to go back, just click that again, and you've got your customized notifications once again. So a couple of the optional things. Um, the first one is I, I'm curious with a show of, of raising your hands, either virtually or in person, your tiny hand or your real hand, who all used uh, Google Classroom rubrics this year? It's a fairly new feature. I, I think I did one session on it at the beginning of the year and, and never really talked about it again. All right, we a few folks. OK, awesome. If you used uh, the rubrics, there is a nice feature here where you can export the rubrics to a Google Sheet and then use them and reuse them um, for the future. 
And let's see, I'm trying to remember which one has a rubric. How do you find a Google rubric to use? So you can make them yourself. When you're creating an assignment, and this is a very poor rubric that I threw together in just for this demo. Um, actually, let's start with a brief little thing about rubrics. So when I'm creating an assignment or modifying an assignment, let's grab this one right here and go to the edit. So here I am creating a new assignment. And there's this rubric button right over here. And so I can click on that and create a rubric, reuse a rubric, or import from Google Sheets. So to create one, you simply click on the Create. And then you type in all of the criteria, point values, descriptors, all of those things that go into a rubric. And truthfully, they're a little time consuming to make which is where that import from Google Sheets is nice. So let me go ahead and go back to that one if I haven't lost it already. The new assignment right here, here we go. So I'm going to go into the edit feature and click on the rubric. And again, that sneaky little skinny snowman three dots menu I can edit it, I can delete, or I can export to Sheets. So I'm going to go ahead and click Export to Sheets. And my export is complete. I'm going to view it here. And it's a weird format that uh, Google has for these. But with a little bit of practice, these do start making sense. And you can build your rubrics in the Google Sheets, or you can build them in the regular interface itself. Once you have them in this uh, format, I could go in and so I'm going to go back over here and I'm just going to grab a different assignment. Let's go to this one and we're going to edit the assignment. And now I can do import that rubric and then I'll go looking for it which I thought was called new assignment. There it is. So if I click on this one, which I know is the rubric, I would probably name these rubrics so I know what I'm looking for. Click Add, and there it goes. Nice and easy. So again, this one is a totally optional. Um, I just I think this is a really brand new feature where you can export your rubrics. So for those of you who have been using rubrics, just wanted to show you that that is out there. You can also, while we're being honest about this, I'm going to close this, discard this. I can also reuse a rubric from another classroom. So I can just pull that in as well. Again, that's a, that's a nice, nice little feature there. So let's talk about the classroom folder. Now, the classroom folder which is created when you create your first Google Classroom. Do not delete that one. And pretty much most of the time, I don't see a lot of reason to go in there. That's why you've got the, you know, at its heart, Google Classroom is really just uh, Google Groups and a kind of nice shell for sharing Google files and links. This Classroom folder holds all of that. And if it disappears, it causes lots of issues. So we do not want to delete it. But that doesn't mean that we can't clean things up. So I'm going to go back over into my Google Classroom. And there are a couple of ways to get to the folder. I'm just going to show this one here. When you see that little button, that is the Google Drive folder for that classroom. And if we click on that, you'll see you can also find it because it is just called Classroom. So in your actual Google Drive, there is a folder called Classroom, and within this has all of your Google Classrooms. Now, personally, I never go into this folder, but I know some folks like to. And you know, a lot of people like to kind of marry condo their, their Google Drives at the end of the year. 
Me, I am messy and a hoarder and just leave things willy-nilly throughout my drive because, you know, what is Google best at? Search. So if I'm trying to find something, I typically search for it instead of digging through folders. But again, there are workflows for everyone, and a lot of people do like to organize their folders. So if you would like to organize these, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you do not delete them. But you can go in and click the New button and create a new folder within the Google Classroom folder itself. And let's slide that over. And we're just going to call this Archive. You could even go in with the school year. Um, I loved this year. <laughs> You can do whatever you want, give it all sorts of fun so that you know what it is, and then just click Create. And we've created a folder. And then you can just take all of the things that you want to move in an archive and not have to worry about and just drop them into that folder. You can take all of it. It doesn't matter. It's not going to uh, change anything there. and. Uh, that can be a way to clean up your uh, Google Drive. Optional, like I said, personally, I, I just leave things everywhere in my drive. But if you are one of those people who likes to have a nice clean drive, you can just go in and archive. Them. If you want to go back and look at anything, you can just open up that archive, find the class that you were looking for, and you'll see it is all organized by the assignment. So we could go in and open up and look at the student work, all of that sort of stuff. And it's all just kind of right there. Again, I will be totally transparent. This is not a feature I often use because I do always just search for things. Ryan, I just yes. archived my, put my folders in that school year. How do I find the folder then? So Where that's going to be that? in the classroom folder. Um, so you could do, so one of the options here is folders. So when you go into the search bar, you can type folder, press that button. Or if you like to type, you can type colon folder is the shortcut for that. And then classroom. And then it's figuring out which one is the real one, because I always have lots of classrooms that are called classroom. And it's going to be this one, that first one. The other uh, thing that you might want to do, this does not change uh, anything, is you could change the color um, of the folder so that when you're searching for it, let me go back and search for that. I've made that one green, so I know that's my Google Classroom, the original folder drive. And so that you just kind of you right right click on it to bring up the more options, and you can change the color. Or you could go in and uh, you can actually rename this, and maybe add in like an emoji or something just to remind you that that is the correct one. The things that you do in your drive with that are actually not going to be problematic to Google, because on the back end, there's something called a GUID, a global unique identifier. Um, so that's actually what's happening in the background from Google's perspective, is that it's there's this long string of incomprehensible numbers and letters that actually correlate to this um, folder. But if it gets deleted, then problems happen. So, And my archive classes are there forever? Until you delete them, yes. Yeah. And again, when you're 100% done with one and you know you'll never use it again, this is where my hoarder mentality comes in. I'm like, I might need that again. Why would I get rid of it? It's probably saner to think of why you would want to delete things. But when you are ready and you have no need of this anymore, 
in the archived section, the three dot menu again, and whoops, it has to be one that you own. I don't own that one. There we go. And then delete. So the three dots and delete. And then that will delete it for all time. Over the summer, when, you know, maybe during Google Palooza or right before, right after, and you're starting to think about the year again and getting ready for next year. ITS will be making the Google Classrooms again, but that doesn't mean that you can't make your own versions because those are nice to have. And the reuse post is your best friend. Oh, look at that. We're at the end of the session. Time is working perfectly. OK, so I am going to, once again, archive my really awesome classroom here. Archive that. And I'm just going to go over to my new class and pretend that this is my new class and I'm ready. And I'm like, oh, yeah, there was that one assignment that was so great. I want to do that again. And when I go into Create, Reuse Post, and then because I have 7,000 classrooms, there we go. You can reuse posts from archived classrooms. You'll notice that it does tag it with archived. So you know, you'll know that's archived. But you can go in and grab that. And let's say that write an awesome paper test assignment was, I just really want to reuse that one. And I can make copies of all the attachments that were attached to that. And then I click reuse. And that brings it into my classroom. Now. As that's being built there and pulls in my rubric and everything, and I'm ready to go. And so the nice thing about this is you could sit there and build out and pull in all of your things and be ready when the Google Classrooms get created. You can just go over and pull those assignments that are ready to go for you into your Google Classroom nice and easy. Now. The one thing that is really awesome that I can't show because it doesn't exist right now, but is coming um, for my friends that are teach multiple classrooms. One of the things that really is annoying right now is you can only schedule assignments in a single classroom. But announced today, coming in by the beginning of the school year, the ability to schedule one assignment across multiple courses. So if you've got, uh, if you're a, a librarian and you see, you know, every student in the building, you can create that assignment and send it to every classroom. And when it, when you do that, it pulls it up and you can actually individualize each of those. So you can say this one is due on Monday, but in this class I see them on Tuesday, so I can schedule it for Tuesday. And you can build all of that out and just have that scheduled and ready to go and they'll just show up um, at the right time which is super, super exciting. That is that is one, that's another one I've been waiting for forever. Um, so hopefully by Google Palooza, definitely by the beginning of the year, we will have that time-saving option um, to show and demo, which is very exciting and very cool. And speaking of the summer, even though this is our last after school Tech Tuesday for this school year, we have wonderful things happening all summer, though I do beg you, get some rest. You deserve it. Um, my co-teacher freaks me out with pre-posting. She has it down to the minute syncing with her slides. I mean, some people are very, very much go-getters on this. I'm more of a general, uh, It's as long as it's there on the day, it's good. <laughs> but that is awesome. I, I would love to see that down to the minute. Um, and obviously, Google Palooza is coming uh, the 9th through the 13th, where all of the fun stuff really gets uh, kicked off for next school year. And so the exit slip, I will um, pop the link directly into the chat here. But uh, at this point, any questions? And in, you know, that doesn't necessarily even have to be about Google Classroom, but uh, Ron, we have a question in the chat. Yes. 
Oh, I missed it. Which one? Uh, there was a question about uh, using uh, Google Classroom for summer school. Yes. So uh, for all of the um, kind of regularly scheduled ones, uh, those are going to be created in that same process. So when it's in Aspen, it'll create the classroom and all of that um, fun stuff. But you can also always just kind of create um, classrooms for any purposes. There is still not a way to sort by last name. It's Google loves first names, and it's all by first name. Don't hesitate to reach out to us at any point. We're around all summer. We, like I said, we've got those sessions going on uh, throughout the summer. We'll definitely see you all at Google Palooza. And um, I'm just going to say it one more time. Get some rest. Thank oh. you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been good, man. Thank awesome. you. Bye, everybody. Have a great summer. Nice to see you. Have a great summer. Have a great summer, everyone. Have a great summer.